What is up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be going over a topic that I've had a lot of requests for and is really confusing. So I'm going to teach you guys how to protect your games, artworks, comic books, paint, anything artistic basically uh, from people stealing your ideas. Now you can go about this in loads of ways, there's like copywriting, trademarking and patenting but it's all very confusing so hopefully I'll make this clearer for you. Now I've been working for a board game design and gifting design company for about three years now um, and it's something you have to be really careful with taking um, creating names doing artwork I've had extensive chats with like lawyers and product developers about a lot of the products I've come up with um, so it's something I am quite well educated on and it's not really as difficult as it sounds basically so there are three main ways to protect your artwork from people stealing it or replicating it first one and the main one is copywriting which is the cheapest easiest and most popular way to protect stuff which means people cannot replicate something you have produced whether it be like a video music art anything unique um, and it's completely free as well which is great the next type of protection is through trademarking which costs a little bit of money not too much so it can be done by you know someone developing a game as a hobby um, and this is used for like names logos and images you know when you see like a brand name and it has the little tm in the corner that means they paid for a trademark on that name so no one else can use that name and the third one is patenting uh, and this isn't really used by individuals this is used for kind of whole physical products or inventions really i always think of like uh, you know the industrial revolution someone patenting like a big industrial factory machine or something it's not really used by people in the game and art industries so the first one the main thing we're going to focus on copywriting so the definition of copywriting is literally your right to copy something if that makes sense if you have say I designed this t-shirt which I didn't which I didn't but if I own the copyright to this t-shirt that means I am the only person that can print more copies of it. I could print the design on a mug or something and I would own the copyright. If you don't have a copyright, anyone can like rip off this t-shirt uh, and it's just in the public domain. It's not your intellectual property. So how do I copyright stuff? And I'm, I'm going to stop talking about this t-shirt because my, my channel is about trading cards. So how would I copyright these trading cards? And basically, you don't really need to do anything. As soon as I make these trading cards, these are mine. Uh, no one can copy them but I need to prove that these are mine. So the way I'd copyright stuff, so if someone designed the exact same trading cards and came to me and was like, and um, started selling them, and I was like, hey, he's selling my trading cards, so he's not allowed to do that, I would just need to be able to prove that I did these first against the other person. And then it can be taken to a court of law or something, I've never had to do that, and I think a lot of kind of homemade artists and stuff won't ever need to do that in their career. But to prove that these are mine, I would need record of them somewhere, which I do. Uh, I upload videos on YouTube regularly showing all the cards for this game that I do. Um, you can also do this by posting something on Instagram. Obviously, Instagram kind of saves the date of when you've done something, so you can prove that you did those cards and images before the other person. Um, you can even just email them to yourself and have proof that you sent that email on a certain day. Um, the really old-fashioned way of doing this was you used to have to kind of put, I'd put all my cards and a set of rules in an envelope with a newspaper from that date and then wax seal the envelope and send it to yourself. So that if someone came up to you and was like, hey, you've copied my cards, I could go to a, an old fashioned court and be like, no, I have a wax sealed envelope from this day showing that I invented this game on this day. It's basically, so that's the premise of it. You just need to be able to prove that you did things first, which is so easy with the internet on board. Another way, the most official way, which I don't personally think you need to do, is to go onto your government website, register for a copyright, send in physical copies of your work to the government, and then they will keep it on a file, and uh, it costs about $50, I think, um, and then the government will officially have it on record that you have made a certain thing at a certain time and uh, you shouldn't need to worry about it at all. But I haven't done that with my any of my personal work um, just because I keep such a good record of it on YouTube and Instagram and saved on my computer. Now, the next point is trademarking. And trademarking, like I said, is for things like names, slogans, logos, or kind of brand identity material. So for example, this is my game. I could trademark Chaos Galaxy trading card game. I could trademark the logo for the game, which is like this planet which is this planet. I could trademark the names of the individual planets for the game. Um, 
However, it costs about a hundred pounds or hundred and thirty dollars uh, to trademark something, and each of these individual planet names would cost me that much. So it gets a bit expensive trademarking. Generally, in the company I work for, the only things we tend to trademark are the names of our games. Now, you can trademark things by there's just a trademark website. It's different for every country, uh, but you just try and register a trademark. Uh, you apply, you pay the money, and then the they will get back to you in a few weeks just saying, well done, you've won the trademark. You are now the only person in the world who is allowed to use the name Chaos Galaxy Trading Card Game on your products. If they decline the trademark, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to use these names, but you should check. There's just, there's literally, there's literally on the website, there'll be a link in the description below to the UK one that I'm familiar with um, that literally just lists the every like word or phrase that's ever been trademarked and you can see if you're naming your game something. Like if I were to name a game Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game, you'd look on the trademark thing, see that the, that name is already trademarked, be like, ah, I'm not allowed to call my game Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, so you'd have to choose something else. However, if you're just making a game in your bedroom, it's highly unlikely that the company is gonna kind of come out and get you. And the third way is patenting. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about this one very much. It's super expensive, really complicated, and is used mainly for like physical inventions like like i said before like mechanical processes and machines uh, like like vacuum cleaners for example uh, so that's not really my area of expertise so now i'm going to get onto the kind of blurry bits so say you're making a trading card game and the rules are kind of similar to another trading card game like it's inspired by where is the borderline between inspiration and breach of copyright we had this at the company I work for, we created a game called Super Snap and after working through the rules and thinking right this is a good game, we went on the market and found there was a very similar game up there already. And we were worried because we thought, oh no, like we've accidentally done this and we're going to get in trouble from the original game. So we went to a lawyer and the lawyer said basically, if you go to a judge and present the rule books to both of those games um, and one reads completely different to the other, even if the gameplay is similar, you can't get caught for copyright infringement basically and basically this lawyer just said like if you were to copy a game the way you'd go about doing it is you'd get the rule book read it memorize the rules learn how to play the game then take your knowledge without using the rule book explain to another person how you'd play the game through kind of your own rewording of what you've learned and then get that person to write the rule book and the wording will end up different to the original and it's quite cheeky, but that is how you can get around copywriting. I do not encourage this at all. I think copying is really bad, but if you were to copy a game, that is how you'd do it. If you are making a board game or card game, one good thing, I know I said it's good to present things through YouTube, but if you upload a digital file of your rule book from start to finish, that is a good way to stop people copying your games. So that's kind of it really. Um, a really complicated topic. Hopefully I've made it more simple and less scary for you because I remember when I started the Chaos Galaxy, I was like, oh, what if someone copies me, takes me to court? This is so worrying. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like a kid in my bedroom. I can't take someone down in court. But um, you should, if you're just starting a game, if you're just starting a game from scratch, uh, you should really have nothing to worry about. As long as you record everything you do, keep an organized file or database of it, either through YouTube, Instagram, email, Google Drive, whatever you want. Just keep just keep a record of the game somewhere and no one will be able to copy it. Unless someone like Jeff Bezos comes for you with his team of like billion dollar lawyers, then you've completely screwed. But hopefully that made things easier. In conclusion, copywriting is the way to go, but you shouldn't really have anything to worry about. Just make sure you're prepared by having files and records of everything. And it should be a completely cost-free and hassle-free process for you as an artist, designer, general creative, or whatever other cool projects you're working on. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at ChaosGalaxyTCG. I recently hit 5 million YouTube views. How crazy is that? I Starting this channel, I would have never thought that would have happened. The fact that there have been 5 million clicks on my videos showing interest in them is just nuts to me. I can't thank everyone enough. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.